It was the summer of 1976, and on the menu that day at Camp Sussex, where I was cooking for 500 kids every day, I was the second man, and Satch, or Wayne Kaufman, a.k.a. Satchmo, was my third cook. Chicken chow mein was a favorite of the kids, and that was a little more of a daunting meal than you would think, because you, in order to just get the chicken for the chicken chow mein, you had to pick 2,000 pounds of chicken off the bones to put in the chicken chow mein. And on top of that, to cook the fried rice, you'd be making these big frying pans for 500 kids, and a lot of heat would be coming in an area that you'd not want a lot of heat to be hitting from those hot stoves as you were cooking fried rice uh, for hundreds and hundreds of kids. Well, anyway, we spent the whole morning picking chickens, making the fried rice, and preparing that meal. We loved that meal as it was an easy meal to serve later on because we started around 6 a.m. and around 1.30, uh, Wayne, a.k.a. Satchimo, left the kitchen with me. We went for a quick dip down on the lake, and then we went back up to the room. We hung out for a little while, and we both fell asleep. At 6.20, we were somehow woke up on our own account, and we realized we had missed a meal, and nobody had come to wake us. Nobody in our team thought to wake us up, even though we slaved, we worked hard to make that chicken chow mein. We then went into the kitchen and started basically berating every one of our team members in the kitchen about why they didn't come and wake us up. Now, at one point, things started getting loud, and things started getting physical, and things started getting a little dangerous. And the mistake we made is, my mentor, Alzie Jackson, who had taught us everything about cooking, about life, and about everything, well, we started berating him. At that point, we got removed from the kitchen. We were so prideful about the meal that we had cooked. Even though we had worked in a 100-degree kitchen and already put in nine hours, but we wanted to go back and put the other three and a half hours in, which we were not allowed to do because, well, Alzie Jackson's excuse was he wanted to let us sleep in. We had so much pride in the work and the meal that we had cooked that we wanted to serve it ourselves. And we were so upset that we didn't get a chance to do that and even more upset that our teammates, the other cooks and people in the kitchen, didn't come and wake us up. We got so crazy with Alzi that we had to get removed from the kitchen and we got physically removed because we were vocal, vulgar, we were crazy. I look back on that day and I think about the level of commitment. Inclusion breeds commitment. And you think about the level of commitment from just a couple teenagers about how we felt about the meal that we had cooked and the fact that we wanted to see that meal get served ourselves. And my question to you that when you're managing people, are your people working on a shot clock? Is there a beginning and end to the day? Do a lot of your people can't wait till the end of their day? And how all in are you to the point where if you did miss something that was going on at your company, would you care? Or would you look at it as an opportunity to just get another day off? Because to me, if you're loving what you do, there is no shot clock. And you don't want another day off because you're all in and you're completely consumed about what you're doing and figuring out ways to make it better.